more Sailor Moon. And um, I don't know if you watched the um, the YouTube video that was taken at, here at Odafest. I hope you do. But I was talking about special needs people in it, and I really hope I didn't offend anyone because I used to work with special needs. Um, not Sailor Moon, but Tracy. And um, I have done design programs for artistic and Down syndrome people, and I don't think they should be called special needs. I think they should just be called special because I think they're human beings that come from a specific perspective that all of us can benefit from. I think they're some of the most patient, some of the most, you know, people who are willing to work for goals, people who are are loving and come from their heart center because they have to, and I think they're actually great, they're, they're teachers in some way. I think they should be called normal and special. So I, I really, I have a heart for them, and, I, and I, for those people that are born with specific perspectives and have physical, you know, limitations that make their spirit big and special. So uh, that's my perspective. So I love you, and I, and I hope that you watch YouTube, and I hope that you come see me and any of the Sailor Moon stuff, and I hope you continue loving Sailor Moon. And, uh, thank you. I have learned. I have. I wasn't born in Calgary, but I have lived in Calgary for a long time. And the one thing is that many people say is Calgary has a big city with a country heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, because the, well, the thing is, we do a lot of stuff. That, well, in a few weeks, or actually next this coming Friday, the Calgary Stampede. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's over a hundred years old now. Yeah. And the thing is, is that you know it. You got a big city. You got a small country park, and it's 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 kind of interesting how people grow and evolve. And how the Calgary has been on and up, been growing by downtown like in the 1950s, 60s. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, really more like a, like the city. And downtown itself is, in the only direction they could go anywhere is up. Yeah. <laughs> it's still got the same Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, I agree with you. My name is uh, Sarah, That's but right. uh, Hi, Sarah. everybody calls me Raven, okay. so I'm sure that there's Hi, Raven. a ton of people. Forget Sarah. I'm also Calgary born and raised, as I'm sure a lot of us are. Yeah! Because, yeah, we're in Calgary. Um, but, oh, you know, I like, yeah, question. we're in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. All 30 years. What's your question? Okay, well, go sit. So, um, I was just wondering, uh, did you guys ever assume that it would be as big as it is? That Sailor Moon would be the idol of so many okay. girls around the world? Okay, um, actually, I was there when the first thing happened. And nobody knew about this stuff. It was like usually a dubbing company did Sailor Moon, which meant like Jill knew because she was French and she was working with that company, and <laughs> she still is. And um, <laughs> and, and uh, it was a dub. It was it was bought actually. Sailor Moon was purchased from Japan, then chopped up, then rewritten, and then farmed out from Deke, which is an American company, to a very small company that bid on it that did dubbing, really, but up until that time, that's what they were doing. And dubbing is when you add the voice after a product's already made. And, and at that time, the status quo was that the voice would come first, and there was a bunch of production money. This was very inexpensive, because the production was already there, and all they were looking for was the actors to like match the voice and, and, and say it to the picture. So this was a big, ambitious pr project for this little company. And no one knew what was going on. And we had characters that had, like, was anime was brand new. No one knew what that, like, their mouths were bigger than their heads. Like, their <laughs> eyes were popping out of, you know, they were turning into hearts and they're going, no, I'm kidding. Like, this is going to fail. <laughs> this is invented by a special needs person. You know, it's not going to do very well. I mean, no, a, a much less adept one than you. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like it was so odd that we were going, it's, there's just no way. And it just turned out that I was a flake, and I was directing. And so the guy who was directing actually didn't understand the show. And they said to me, Tracy, do you direct? I said, yeah. And I said, they said, do you know anything about this? I said, I actually understand it. It's like the planets are in, I was like hippie, flaky. And so I, I get it. It's crystals, and it's like planets. And people are just looking at me like, uh-huh. <laughs> well, she's the only one with the vaguest clue about what this is about. So guess what? You're directing tomorrow. And I'm like, yay! Yeah! Like, you know, 
eyes, you know, the de you know, sort of like this deadpan looking faces with eyes this big going, whatever. And then, so no one knew it all. It was like the sleeper of the century. And it, then it became as big, I think we're all surprised that we're still talking about it like 20 years later. But we're really happy, look what happened. All you beautiful people, and it was so odd that all, all the people with special ideas and feeling alone and feeling quirky and feeling not fitting in were scooped up by this project, especially the girls, well, and the guys actually, because it has cross-gender, it had all those things, all those voices were in that project, and look, look how beautiful you've all become. So, so we're, we couldn't be more excited. Okay. So <laughs> I'm just going to touch on that for a second too, because um, you know, here we are, 25 years later, and it's it, it's amazing how far this has come. And I think I can speak for the entire cast. None of us had any inclination that it would turn out to be the way it turned out. As Tracy was saying, in original animation, everything you see on TV, The Simpsons, Family Guy, whatever, uh, you lay down the voices first and then they draw to it. But for this, it's dubbing. And so it came in, no one had done it before. We were just reading copy. We didn't, we didn't know what anime was. And um, then it kind of, for me anyway, went dormant for a lot of years. And then it got kind of resurrected at the 20th anniversary and all these cons started coming up. And I do a lot of different cons for different characters, but when it comes to, um, to, to fan loyalty and uh, the most amazing fans in the world, the Cinnamon fans are, are, are absolutely the best. Yeah, and, you are. Yeah, and you really are. Like, there's no comparison. And so here we are 25 years later with all of you guys, and it, it, it blows our minds every day. So thank you all.